progress. There we go. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to hear your voices and see your faces. Is that a Alicia shirt? No, nah, that's the Lord. I got a <laughs> flying shirt on the thing. <laughs> yeah. We, we want a Alicia shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is my summertime beach shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So praise God. Well, happy Sunday to you all. Amen. I'm excited to get into the word today. Um, just looking up one quick scripture real quick that popped in my head, and then we're going to jump in. All right, found it. All right, so today our message is titled Take Me to the King. Um, there was a song titled that uh, that I actually like quite a bit, but going further than the song. Uh, going to the king is a kingdom concept by which all the needs of the citizens are met. It is a, a, a pleasure, it's an honor to stand before the king. And everybody knows you can't outgive the king because all things belong to the king. And the king takes joy in blessing the citizens. You know, the citizens operate in a commonwealth. And so there's nothing more pleasurable, there's nothing more desirable, there's nothing more significant than being in the presence of the king. Uh, there's people that live in kingdoms their entire lives, but never have the opportunity or the pleasure to stand before in the presence of the king. Man. Uh, people life change when they get into the presence of a king. Things begin to happen. Uh, because the word of a king is power. And so okay. at, the, at the snap of a finger, in an instance, your life can be transformed just by being in the very presence of the king. Again, mm -hmm. it's an absolute pleasure and an honor to stand before the king. We know that this book of instructions, the 66 books of the Bible, is about a king and his kingdom. And it's about the king's family. So the king has a family and they reside in a kingdom. And it's about conquering territory to expand his kingdom. He said, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth, just how it is in heaven. So the Bible is about a king. Mm -hmm. And the king rules over all things. And so as children of that king, as heirs to that throne, he have now empowered us to be kings and priests. And so we are going to talk about how to get into the presence of the king. You know, the challenges that you might face in life, the obstacles that you might face in life, the things that we go through, the things that we are trying to overcome, the things that we're trying to get provisions to make it to the next day or make it past the issue, or even just fulfilling the mandate that God has placed on our life, it is gonna require us to get into the presence of the King. And so we wanna to leave today with the mindset that by any means necessary, we need to get in the presence of the King. That's why I titled it, Take Me to the King. Yeah. We know the King is Jesus. He is our Savior. He is Lord of Lords. He is Kings of Kings. That's why God said that we are kings because that makes him King of Kings. Mm -hmm. He said that we are Lords because that makes him Lord of Lords. 
He reigns supreme over all. He is the sovereign God. And if you can find your way into his presence, transformation is inevitable. You know, the, the woman with the issue of blood, she said, if, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, mm -hmm. if I can just get close enough to the king, I know I'll be made whole. All those years with that issue of blood, and in the moment she got into his presence, mm -hmm. the moment she touched the hem of the king's garment, she was instantly made whole because she just needed to get in front of the king. Amen. The man with the, the, the infirmity that, that, that was disabled, that could not go and stand before the king on his own, he, he, he wanted to be made whole. His friends wanted him to be made whole. They tore the roof off the house and lowered the man down inside the house. Why? Amen. To get him into the presence of the king. Mm -hmm. If I can just get in front of the king, I'll be made whole. Yes. So they tore the roof off the house and lowered the man down inside the house. Why? So he can get in the presence of that king so he may be delivered and experience freedom. Amen. Centuria told Jesus, he said, well, well, just speak the word only. Why? Because I know you have the word of a king. And where the word of a king is, there is power. So speak Amen. the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Just speak. I know who you are. You're a king. You have the authority to speak, and it, and it happens. Mm -hmm. And it manifests. So just speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. Jesus said, great is thy faith. Jesus sent forth the word. And his servant was healed from that very hour. Amen. Transformation occurs when you get into the presence of the king. In Psalms 24, uh, 7 and 8, it says, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and ye lift up ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come yes. in. Who yes. is this king of glory? The long, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. He is yes. the king. Yes. You know, we, we've gotten to a point where we become too complacent and too uh, 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 created a normalcy to who he is. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's our heavenly father, but he is king. Amen. You know, you watch movies because a lot of us never had a chance to experience the kingdom, but you watch movies and, and, and a prince, when he goes off into a foreign territory, he becomes king over that territory. But anytime he goes back to his home state, anytime he goes back to the original kingdom from which he was sent, he knows that he now comes under the sovereign rule of his father, the king. Mm -hmm. So there's a reverence there, there's a respect there, there's a love there, there's a there's an understanding that yes, I'm a king, but he is king of kings. Mm -hmm. That I, I, I'm only sovereign to the to the point that which he empowers me to be sovereign. Um, in Revelations chapter 12, verse 9 and 10, um, this is when Lucifer, uh, the light bearer, was released from heaven, kicked out of heaven. It's, Says, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, Satan, which deceived the whole world. And he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. He said, and I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, now, is the, now has come the salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren has been cast down. He has been accused before them day and night. So the accuser of the brethren has been cast down. And he said, now is salvation, strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. Yes. So he's declaring that now yeah. is the time. The kingdom is being restored. Salvation is being made available. And the power of his Christ is now reigning supreme. He's declaring that into the earth. So 
we hear about the king, we hear about the kingdom, and the question becomes, how do we get in front of the king? Somebody needs to take me to the king, <laughs> where, where my provision is, where my help is, where yes. my life is, my source of strength, he is my father, the word father means source, but somebody has to take me to the king. Amen. I've been suffering, I'm tired, I've been abused, I'm broke, I'm going through pain and suffering, I, I gotta get in front of the king. Well, Jesus steps up and he says, Hey, I'm the way, the truth, and mm -hmm. the life. Amen. If you want to come to the Father, you're gonna have to come by me. Mm -hmm. Jesus said he is the way, the truth, and the life. The way is talking about when you look up the Greek word, it's talking about a road. A road travel, a way to reach the king. He is the truth. He is Jesus full of grace and truth. And he is the life. This truth brings forth eternal life. Your Amen. life is now hid in Christ with God. Amen. The only way to reach the Father, the only way to travel this road, he says, you're going to have to come through me, Jesus, full of grace and truth. So we're going to touch on these points of the way, the truth, and the life, and then we're going to dive straight into the kingdom. John 1.14 says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the only glory of the begotten Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus is full of grace and truth. If you want to know what's inside of Jesus, you can never mistake he is grace and truth. For the law came by Moses, John 1, 17. For the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen. Moses got into the presence of God, and he got the law, the Mosaic covenant, and he brought it forth on behalf of God to men. So he said the law came by Moses, but he had to get into the presence of God to get it. He said, but there's a man named Jesus, and he lived in the presence of God. He is the eternal word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He said, and then that word became flesh, and he dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The only begotten son of the Father. Yes. Jesus, full of grace and truth. So the law came by Moses, but this grace and truth, this new covenant, it comes by Jesus. Yes. Amen. John 8, 32, he says, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. The truth shall set you free. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. Mm -hmm. The truth shall set you free. There is no freedom outside of Christ. There is no free. That's why I say where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. Why? Because the truth sets you free. John, 1 John 2.27. 1 John 2.27. It says, but the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. The anointing that you receive from him abideth in you. You know, when you become saved, you receive the first installment of the spirit. First installment of the spirit. Spirit. That is the earnest of the spirit. That's the Holy Spirit now residing in the heart of man. He said, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is true, and is no lie. That anointing is there to teach you. Yes. He said he's going to teach you what? The truth. Amen. Jesus said, I I'm going to send the comforter. I'm going to send the spirit of truth, and then he will lead you. He will guide you. He will show you things to come. It says that this anointing will teach you all things because it is the truth. Everything the anointing teaches is the truth. How does the anointing teach? The scripture says it is Christ speaking in me. That's that rhema word we're always talking about. So when the Holy Spirit is speaking into the heart of man, every word spoken by the Holy Spirit is the truth. Amen. Is the truth. 
Um, Ephesians 4.20, but ye have not so learned Christ, if so be ye that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. The truth is in Jesus. Um, 3 John chapter 1, verse 4 says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. A righteous man's steps are ordered by the Lord. But those, those, those commandments that's coming from the spirit of Christ, those commandments that's coming from the spirit of Christ, he said, when you follow those commands, you are walking in truth. Why? Because those commandments are true. Those commandments Amen. are true. Uh, John 14, 17, it says, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth not him, neither knoweth him. It says, but ye know him, for he dwells in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Father, we thank you that you did not leave us comfortless. Amen. You, you, you got to be thankful for the grace of God. Mm -hmm. he, he didn't have to do it. That, you got to understand the king and his mercy. He didn't have to. He woke me up this morning. He didn't have to do it. He didn't have to wake me up this morning. You know how many people didn't wake up this morning? Amen. Amen. I'm here today because he woke me up this morning. Mm -hmm. There's so many people that got a testimony this morning that say so-and-so passed in their sleep. I don't know. It wasn't no sickness. It wasn't no disease. They just didn't wake up. Well, mm -hmm. thank you, Jesus. You woke me up this morning. Amen. I got breath in my lungs. I got my health in good conditions. He didn't have to do it. Yes. We, 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 we separated ourselves from him in the garden from our forefather, Adam, and yet he let his son die. And then when his son left, he still sent the comforter. He didn't have to do it. Mm -hmm. He said, I will not leave you comfortless, Man. for I Man. will come to you. For I will come to you. John 15, 26 says, but when the comforter is come, who I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth, which proceeds from the Father, he shall testify of me. Who is me? He's talking about Jesus himself. But when I send the comforter from the Father, it says he will testify for, He will testify of me. What's his name? He is the spirit of truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. And I depart, I'm going to send you the comforter, and he is the spirit of truth. He is the spirit of me. Amen. The spirit of Jesus, the spirit of truth, being sent back as the comforter to lead and guide the children of God. Uh, John 16, 13, how be it when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you in all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He will not speak of himself. He is not here on his own authority. He will only speak what he's heard from the Father. This is the condition of holiness. This is why he said, sanctify them through thy truth. Why? Thy word is truth. So when the Holy Spirit of truth comes, he said he's only going to speak what he hears the Father speak. When the king speaks, the spirit of truth will speak. And when the spirit of truth speaks into your heart, he said that is him showing you things to come. Yes. Showing you things to come. It says, sanctify them through thy truth. Bring them into the condition of holiness. So confession is made unto salvation. We know the word confess means to repeat what the Holy Spirit has spoken. God and his word are, are, are one. So mm -hmm. now there's the oneness of his word that has to go from heaven. We talked last week about dimensional exchanges. God speaks on the throne. The king is in heaven. When he speaks, the Holy Spirit hears, and then he declares exactly what was spoken of the king. Mm -hmm. This is no different than in any other kingdom. Anytime a king speaks in a kingdom, there's always a point, man, who repeats and declares what the king has spoken. His word mm -hmm. must be repeated, and then it becomes law. Yes. So the king speaks, and then, then the person repeats the king's order, and the moment it's repeated, it's declared law. 
So same example, the king speaks, and then the Holy Spirit declares what the king has spoken, and it has just become law to you. Whatever he spoke in the heart of man through that rainbow word, it has just become law to you. That's why faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing what? What the king declared. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 43, 26. Put me in remembrance of my word. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou may be justified. Put me in remembrance of my word. So when I speak it and the Holy Spirit is speaking, I don't want you to declare it back unto me. Why? You're putting him in remembrance of his word. Why? Mm -hmm. Because God cannot deny his own word. Amen. He cannot deny his own word. You're, you're only echoing what he said. That's all it's happening. He's speaking it, the Holy Spirit is speaking, and then you're echoing it back to him. He's actually talking to himself through himself. You're echoing it back to him. John 15, 3 says, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken. We know that the word, he says, the word I speak is spirit and it brings forth eternal life. The word of God when it's declared by the Holy Spirit through the utterance, the rhema word, it has a purifying effect. It purifies the heart of man. Why does it need to be purified? Two reasons. One, it brings it in the condition of holiness and two, it enables it to hear. It enables it to hear. Anything that abounds increases. So when he speaks in the heart of man, it purifies it so that you can continuously hear from God. Why? Because if his word abounds in your heart, that's why he says, if you abide in me, and my word abide in you. Yes. No, the word needs to abide in you. Why? Because if it abides, it begins to abound and it increases. Mm -hmm. The entrance of my word giveth light, it giveth understanding, and then mm -hmm. comes wisdom. And then after wisdom comes the commandments, after the commandments come righteousness. There's a trail, there's a progression that happens. Amen. But the requisite is that the word must abound in you, it must remain in you, it has a purifying effect. 1 Peter uh, one twenty two says, seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love. Uh, Matthew 5 and 8 says, blessed are the pure in heart. Why? For they shall see the king. Blessed are the pure in heart. That word Bless, we tell you all the time it means empowered to succeed. It means you've been empowered for success. So he said, Blessed are the pure in heart. How did you become the pure in heart? Through the rainbow of words speaking in your heart, purifying mm -hmm. your heart. What did it do? It empowered you. Why? Because it says the entrance of his word give it light. Mm -hmm. Why? So that you can see the king. So that you can see the king. He's taking you to the king house, straight through his word, empowering you. Blessed are the pure in heart, for yes. they shall see God. He's empowering you to stand before the king. Mm -hmm. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. I don't want you to ever forget this. Anything you believe, you become. Anything and everything you believe, you become. Man is not the flesh. We are a spirit. Man is a spirit that lives in a fleshly body, and he's in possession of a soul. So your inner man is the true you. You are spirit. And anything that you believe, that's why we always talk about he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. The word I speak is spirit. Anything that you believe becomes part of you. That's why it says with the mouth you confess into salvation, but it's with the heart that you believe unto righteousness. Why? Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's, it's of the inner man. Anything you believe, you become. 
Amen. First uh, John chapter four, verse one says, beloved, believe not every spirit. He's confirming it right there. He said, listen, don't believe every spirit because anything that you believe, you become. So I want, he goes on to say, but try the spirit. In the other mm -hmm. verse, it says, trust the spirit, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. Do not believe any and everything. Amen. Why? Because it becomes part of you. This is how iniquities end up in the, in the, in the, in the spirit of man. So iniquities have been found in you. Do not believe everything. Do not become one spirit with everything you hear. But before you accept it as truth, before you allow it into your soul, you said, test that spirit. Yes. To see, is it above me? Test that spirit. I, uh, uh, back in the day when a prophet would stand before the people and proclaim anything and say, thus saith the Lord thy God, and they would proclaim something that they were saying that came straight from God through their heart for them to declare. If that thing they declared did not come to pass, the prophet was killed. It was punishable by death. You did not play around with God's word. Amen. If you declare it, it's mandatory that it manifests. And if it doesn't, your head was the consequence. This day and age, oh man, under democracy, it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. You're in front of the people of God and they can declare this and they can declare that and they can say this is going to happen and that's going to happen and none of it can happen and they'll just simply say, we missed. We missed. Man. I first, listen, I, I have a book. I have a book that I keep. And I don't do, I don't do this um, to put people on display. So I never say the names associated with the book because that's never my angle. But I keep a book. Every time I hear a prophetic word given, I write down the prophetic word. Whatever the prophet spoke, I write it down. I write down the date, I write down the time, and I write down the person who spoke it, and then I pay close attention to see if that thing happens. Mm -hmm. I have about 14 prophetic words that were spoken with specific dates and when things were going to happen. Out of all 14 of those, only two of them happened. 12 of them never happened. Back in the day, it was punishable by death. But this day and age, oh, you can say Jesus said anything. The Spirit of the Lord said this. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of the Lord said that. And in Jeremiah 14, 14, this is the Good News translation. Listen to what the Lord says. But the Lord replied, the prophets are telling lies in my name. He can't believe it. They're, they're lying. The prophets are lying in my name. I did not send them, nor did I give them any orders, nor did I speak one single word to them. They're lying in my name. <laughs> this is why I said, do not believe every spirit. Everyone that says that they come on behalf of me and declare on behalf of me is not yes. good. Test that spirit to see if it's of me before you become joined to anything that's professing the name of the Lord. It says the visions they talk about have not come from me. Their predictions are worthless things that they have imagined of themselves. Mm -hmm. they're proclaiming things that they thought up in their own imagination and now they want to say thus saith the Lord with no accuracy and no manifestation it says who can speak a thing and it comes to pass unless the Lord has commanded it first Amen. it must come through the king if it doesn't come through the king then it just doesn't happen it has mm -hmm. to come through the king how do I know what comes to the king? Because the Holy Spirit repeats the king's word. When the Holy Spirit speaks to you, oh, the king just spoke. Mm -hmm. Oh, the king said it. Oh, his word is ironclad. 
Oh, I trust the king. He can't lie. He's not a man that he should lie. If the king spoke it, it shall come to pass. Because the moment we talked about last week, the moment he says it, immediately it is so. The moment he says it, immediately it is so. Amen. Galatians 5.24. And they that are our Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. Those that are of Christ have crucified the flesh with the affection and lust. Now this is important because it's given us an example of what it means to be crucified with Christ. We know how he was crucified, but now it's telling us how to be crucified so we can understand the life to be crucified with Christ. 1 John 2.16 this is the New Living Translation. First John 2.16 says, For the world offers only craving for physical pleasure, mm -hmm. a craving for everything we see, and a pride in our achievements and our possessions. None of these are from the Father, but they're all from the world. Mm -hmm. It's telling you what it means to be crucified with Christ. It says the world is only going to offer you cravings of physical pleasure, cravings of everything you see and the pride of our achievements and our possessions. It says, do away with those things. That's how you become crucified with Christ. That's mm -hmm. how you get away from the affections and the lust of the world and the pride of life. This is yes. how you become crucified to the flesh. Why? So I can live the life of Christ. Mm -hmm. So I can live the life of Christ. We talk about this scripture all the time, Galatians 2.20. It's why he say, I am crucified with Christ, yet I live, but not I, but it's Christ living in me. It is Christ living in me. I, mm -hmm. I, I crucified myself with Christ. We're no longer chasing the bag. He's responsible for my provision. I'm no longer making moves and decisions based on how I feel and what I want. No, no, it's in him I move. It's in him we live. It's in mm -hmm. him that our very being. Mm -hmm. And now I live by the faith of the Son of God. Yes. In Galatians 2.16, it tells us we are made right with God. How? By faith in Jesus Christ. By the faith of Jesus Christ. It says, Romans 5.1, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God and through our Lord Jesus Christ. We now have peace with God. We're talking about going to see the king. You're not going to see the king until you first have peace with him. But if you really think about it, God was never hostile towards man, but it was man hostile towards God. Amen. It says that the flesh uh, is enmity towards God. The carnal mind is, is enmity towards God. What does that enmity mean? It means you have irreconcilable differences between you and the Father. It says the carnal mind would never submit to the law. It never can. Why? Because he thinks he's sovereign. The flesh thinks he's sovereign. He wants to be in control. He wants to live from the outside in by the lust of the eyes and by the, 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 the pride of life and your own self yes. I, I can do on my own strength. I don't mm -hmm. need God. Mm -hmm. He said, but when you crucify yourself, when you drop self-confidence, you can pick up this confidence called faith in Jesus Christ. And that's the life that God wants us to live. It says, and this righteousness from God comes from faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. Uh, Alec, hit your mute button for me. You heard me, Alec? Hey, Jarrell. Let me see if I can read them. Oh, there you go. I was able to do it myself. <laughs> All right. And this righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ. So this faith in Jesus Christ 
has created a righteousness. And it has allowed God to impute righteousness on us. The same way he did with Abraham. He imputed righteousness on them because now we can have righteousness of life in Jesus Christ. Okay. It says, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and then I'll add all things unto you. That's the deal. That is our covenant. That is our arrangement. I'm making it plain and simple. He says, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and then I'll add all things unto you. It's that simple. He said, if, 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 if I gave you my son, will I not also give you all things? Amen, amen. If I gave you the king of kings, if I gave you the Lord of lords, if I let my only begotten die mm -hmm. on your behalf, you were still in sin, how sound towards me, you got to believe I'll give you everything else. All mm -hmm. I ask that you is seek the kingdom first. Yeah. Seek the kingdom and his righteousness. Well, Father, you, you're going to have to show me how to seek the kingdom. Because I want to see the king, and I want to seek the kingdom, and I want to have everything else added on to me, but you're going to have to walk me through this. If you show me how to work it, I'll work it. He says, seek the kingdom and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto you. We're going to break this thing down, and it's not rocket science. He starts off by telling you to seek. Mm -hmm. He tells you to seek. How do we seek? It is one of the most critical things you're going to have to learn because it's extremely significant to everything that followed. But this thing is a progression. He said, first, I want you to seek. Mm -hmm. The word seek means by thinking, by <laughs> listening, by reasoning. It means to inquire. It means to strive after. It means to demand. It means to crave. It means to go full-fledged and all out for anything that you desire, seeking after that thing. In 1 Chronicles 28.9, he says, if thou seek him, he will be found of thee. Mm -hmm. He ain't hard to find. He ain't lost. He said, if you, you just got to seek after him. If you seek after me, he said, I will be found of thee. In Hebrews 11, 6, it says, Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of who? Him that diligently seek after him. He said, I'll reward those who diligently seek me. Believing is the only roadway to God, but it starts with seeking. It starts with seeking. Psalms 34 and 4 says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me and find me when you search me with all of your heart. Amen. <laughs> when you search me with all of your heart, then you will seek me and you will find me. Matthew 7, 8. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks Finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be open. If the door ain't open, you ain't knocking. <laughs> if, if the door ain't open, it's because you ain't knocking. It ain't never God here you knocking and he just ignore it. Nope. He said, if you're not, I promise you I'll open it up. Mm -hmm. Psalms 10 4, the wicked through the pride of his consonants will not seek after God. For God is not in all his thoughts. My Lord today. <laughs> he said, you will not seek after God when God is not in all of your thoughts. This is the concept of meditating. This is why he gave very clear instructions. He said, meditate on this word day and night. Feel mm -hmm. your thoughts with my word. Yes. He said, he, he won't find me. Why? He's not seeking after me. Why? Because I'm not full of his thoughts. His, he has thoughts beyond just me. You see, oftentimes we seek after God, but we seek after man way simultaneously. He said, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. It, that, that. There's a heavenly realm and there's an earthly realm. Pick your provision. Pick your provision. 
You can either seek after the king and his righteousness, or you can go the earthly way. Mm -hmm. Now, he, he, he gave the earth to the children of men, and now you've been empowered to, to, to choose. But, but he said, you're not going to choose both. You're not going to do both. Either get full of me in your thoughts, of my word in your thoughts. Let me be your source of provision. Or you can get the provision of the earth. Mm -hmm. Now, what we like to do, we like to do the provision of the earth. And when the earth fell us, then we'll say, all right, God, I'll give you a shot. He said, seek first the kingdom. Yes. Psalms 9.10. It says, in that ye know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, has not forsaken them that seek thee. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, but it's going to require you to seek after me. Psalms 27 and 8. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Your face, I will seek. Last one, Psalms 105 and 4 says, Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face forevermore. Seek the Lord and his strength and seek his face forevermore. So if he, he starts off by saying, Before you do anything, I need you to seek. What are we seeking? We're seeking first the kingdom and his righteousness. Where is this kingdom? And what is this kingdom? When you look at Romans 14, 17, it gives us a description of the kingdom. In Romans 14, 17, mm -hmm. it says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Those are the three components of the kingdom, righteousness, peace, and joy, that they're all in the Holy Spirit. What does that mean that it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit? Well, where is the Holy Spirit? Scripture tells us the Holy Spirit lives in the heart of man. Yes. Well, that's on the inside. Luke 17, 21, neither shall they say, lo, here or lo, there. For behold, the kingdom mm -hmm. of God is within you. Yes. Now we're going somewhere. The kingdom of God is within you. It says it is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is in the heart of man. And now the kingdom of God is within us. Mm -hmm. So he said, don't, don't say low here and low there, as in the kingdom must be there and the kingdom must be there. I'm begging now, God from above, the kingdom. He said, no, 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 relax. I, I, I put the kingdom on the inside of you. Yes, yes. I put the, I put the kingdom on the inside, the treasure you're looking for, the promise you're looking for, the rest, the inheritance. I, I put it in you. <laughs> this is why he told you to work out your salvation. Why? Because I, I put everything pertaining to life and godliness on the inside of you. Yes. So every time you're on your knees and you're begging and you're pleading and father this and father that, you no, know, stop, stop the begging. You don't, don't come as a beggar, come as a child, come as a son. Mm. Why? Because the kingdom is on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. so, so now it's time to look inward where the Holy Spirit is. It's time to look inward to, to, to righteousness, to joy, and to peace in the Holy Spirit. Now let's talk about how to do that. Righteousness is a byproduct of believing. Scripture says in Romans 10, 10, with the heart, man believes. With the heart, again, we're talking about the kingdom being within. You believe unto righteousness. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. Mm -hmm. So if righteousness, joy, and peace represents the kingdom of God, and man believes with the heart unto righteousness, now that it's making sense. Mm -hmm. With the heart, I'm going to believe unto righteousness. Okay, I, I, I get that. 
It's going to allow me to be in a right standing with the Father, right relationship, righteousness of life with Christ. And I'm doing that by believing in the heart. Well, how do I get the joy and peace? In Romans 15, 13, it tells you the God of hope will fill you with joy and peace in believing, in believing. So we believe unto righteousness, and we get filled with joy and peace simultaneously with believing. Yes. So that means believing in the righteousness, joy and peace and believing. Believing is the entrance in, 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 into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. We get righteousness through believing. We get joy and peace filled in our soul through believing. Believing and believing, that brings you into the entrance of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. But hold on a second. How do I do all this believing? This is why he said, hey, if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, everything else will be added unto you. Amen. The only work I need you to do is believe. If believing gets me into the kingdom, if believing gets me righteousness, joy, and peace, then the only work I need you to do is believe. This is where rest comes in. He said, hey, rest from your words, bro. I don't need you working. I need mm -hmm. you trusting. Mm -hmm. Why? Because those who believe do enter into that rest. You will rest from your works because if you believe and you enter into this kingdom, there's a rest made available for you. Mm -hmm. How do I believe? How do I believe? I need faith to believe because it's going to require confidence to rest. Faith is the absolute, the 100%. No questions asked, confidence. 99.9% .9 confidence is 100% of unbelief. Yes. Your faith produces 100% confidence that allows you to rest. You need faith in order to believe. This is why the scripture says righteousness is a faith. Mm -hmm. Even though you believe unto righteousness, it's telling you you got that belief from faith. That's why faith is now of righteousness. So righteousness is of faith. And you believe unto righteousness. And you get filled with joy and peace while believing. Now Romans 4.16. Follow me on this. Romans 4.16. We talked about in the kingdom is your rest. It's in your inheritance. It's where the king resides. It's where the promises are. But righteousness is of faith. Romans 4, 16, that amplifies says, therefore, inheriting the promise depends entirely on faith. Inheriting the promises that comes under righteousness, that comes under believing, that comes from entering into that rest, it says it depends entirely on faith. Why? that it is confident trust in the unseen God in order that it might be given as an act of grace. It's of faith that it might be given as an act of grace. What is faith? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Faith begins where the will of God is known. When the Holy Spirit declares the word of God to you, Jesus said he's going to take from what is mine and he's going to declare it unto you. What do you have? You're not in possessions of the king's word. What is that? When the word of the king is, you have his power. You have his ability. Mm -hmm. He's empowering with his Christ. You have faith. You have the word of the king. That's why faith is a noun, because you're in possession of something. You have the king's word. He declared to you in the spirit. Now you have the king's word. You have absolute confidence. Why? Because the king can't lie. I'm confident because the king can't lie. I'm confident mm -hmm. because I trust the word of the king. I'm confident because the spirit has spoken to me, which means the king had to say it first. I'm mm -hmm. sensitive on his word because I'm completely confident. Because if he lied, everything falls apart. Why? He upholds all things by the word of his power. Yes. He has to keep his word. He's bound by his word. Him and his word are one, which makes him holy. 
So I have complete confidence, which is called faith. And now that confidence allows me to believe. I become one spirit with what was spoken, joined to the Lord in spirit. I now possess the spirit of what was spoken. Why is that important? Because it gives me the confidence to rest. He said, yeah. now those who believe do enter into that rest. That is where he wants you to live from a state of rest. That's why you believe unto righteousness, because that is righteousness of life that you're now experiencing. A life of rest. Rest from your works. God of hope filled us with all joy and peace in believing. It says the man who trusts in Christ becomes the righteousness of God in him. Faith imputed and reckoned for righteousness. Luke chapter 10, verse 9. Luke chapter 10, verse 9. It says, and heal the sick that are therein. This is when Jesus was sending the disciples out and told them, everybody that they encounter, if they're sick, I expect you to heal them. He said, but after you heal them, say unto them, the kingdom of God has come upon you. What? The kingdom of God has come upon you. He's telling them he wants people to know that when they experience his miracle working power, that is the kingdom of God coming upon them. He wants the awareness out there that the works that you're seeing, it's all a byproduct of the kingdom. It's advertising. When you realize that what just happened to you is a byproduct of the kingdom, the first thing you want to know is, how do I get to this kingdom? Well, you've got to be faith to believe because you believe under righteousness, and then that allows you into this kingdom. He said in Matthew 12, 28, but if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon them. When Jesus told the spirits to come out of people and the demons came out of people, he said that is the kingdom of God coming upon them. This is the operation of the kingdom. This is how he expects his citizens to operate in this foreign territory. Mm -hmm. Psalms 45 and 6, it says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. Oh, man, that's beautiful. A scepter is the staff that the king holds. Every king has a staff. We we'll always see it in the movies. They got a staff. They call it scepter. And, 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 and that scepter, when they extend it to somebody, that allows them access to come forward. Don't you move unless that scepter is extended. You will lose your life. You don't enter the king's presence unless he welcomes you with his scepter. Amen. The scepter allows you access to enter into the holes of holes. The scepter allows you to enter into the presence of God. The scepter allows you to enter in the secret place. This scripture says a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of the kingdom. How do I get into the kingdom? A scepter of righteousness. Righteousness gives me access to the king. That is the scepter going for saying, come on in, my son. Come on in, the beloved of God. Come on in, the son of the king. How? Because you are in righteousness. How do I get in righteousness? You believe unto righteousness, but you needed faith to believe. You needed faith to believe. The God of hope filled you with joy and peace in believing. Why? Because you're in righteousness of life. Now you can enter into the kingdom. You can be in the holy of holies because you entered in the right way. The right way. How? Being joined to the Lord with one spirit. Carrying the life of Jesus on the inside of you. He said he declared the life of his son into the heart of man. We read it last week that as water reflects the face, so a man's heart reflects the man. If the spirit of Christ is in the heart of man, then that is the man. So when you stand before the throne of grace, and you stand before God himself, and he sees you, he actually sees Jesus. Amen, amen. 
He's looking at the heart of man. He's looking at the spirit of man. But he's declared the spirit unto you, which gave you righteousness of life. That's mm -hmm. why you can see him boldly before his throne. Had he not seen Jesus, he would have never let forth the scepter of righteousness. It would never happen. The only reason it happened, that's the true meaning of being covered by the blood. The true meaning, you've become one in spirit with Christ. And now you can stand boldly before the throne of grace and he sees Jesus in you. And he said, oh yeah, that's the righteousness of life. Come on in. Let that come on for it. Come on in. Hebrews 4, 16. Let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in the time of need. He said, if you have needs, you're going to have to come see the king. If you need provision, you're going to have to come see the king. If you need him, you're going to have to come see the king. Everything pertaining to life and godliness has been made available, but to receive it, you're going to have to come see the king. Amen. And you only get to the king if the king stretches forth his scepter, and that scepter in this new covenant of grace is righteousness. Is righteousness. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 10 19, therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. He said, You can come into the holies of holies, but you're going to have to be covered by the blood. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. You hear me keep talking about the holies of holies. Uh, Alicia, can you do me a favor? Can you grab me that water in the freezer, please? You keep hearing me talk about the holies of holies. This is the place where God resides. The holies of holies. This is the place in the old covenant um, under the law where man could not enter. Only the priest could enter the holy. But the holy of holies that the veil protected Oh, nobody could go in there but the high priest or you would immediately die. Thank you. <laughs> the Holy of Holies was the, the innermost chamber of the tabernacle. Um, it was a, a, a sacred room that the, the high priest could only go into once a year, and that was for the atonement of, of man's sins. Um, it said that it's a, it was a perfect huge shade. It was about 15 feet in each direction. Um, and the only thing that was housed in there was the Ark of the Covenant. Mm -hmm. um, the Holies of Holies represents the very presence of God. In, in this area, you can make no mistakes. God is holy and God is perfect. Therefore, he demands holiness and he demands perfection. So yeah. you have the veil and you had on the outside of the veil the holy place where the, the priest could go. But there was only one high priest that had the honor and the privilege ordained by God to step through the veil into the holies of holies. And that's the person who came in with the perfect sacrifice. And they're the one who shed the blood. And they're the one who put the blood on the, on the, on, on the Ark of the Covenant. And they're the one who, who lit the incense. And they said the incense was was there to create a cloud of smoke. Why? Because you couldn't see the face of God because it says no man could stand before God and live. So he had to light all these incense and it would create this big old huge cloud of smoke and then he could offer up the sacrifice unto God. But he could not see his face mm -hmm. in the holies of holies. Um, it said the priest would sprinkle the blood of the sacrifice bull or the goat on the Ark of the Covenant to atone for man's sins. God did not look at the man. He looked at the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You remember when, when uh, the story of Cain and Abel, and the reason why he was mad and angry with his brother was because his sacrifice was accepted and, and mm -hmm. his sacrifice wasn't. He was mad because the sacrifice wasn't accepted. God looks at the sacrifice. Yes. He looks at the sight. He doesn't look at the sin of man. He looks at the sacrifice. 
And if the sacrifice is okay, if the sacrifice is perfect, without spot, without blemish, he said that he'll accept that sacrifice as you being perfect, as you being without spot or blemish. If the sacrifice was okay, then you were okay. Mm -hmm. So they bring the perfect sacrifice into the holies of holies, and God accepts that as the atonement for man's sins temporarily, which is why you got to come back again next year and let's do it again. And then they had all of these rituals. You had to wear these bells. You had to wear these bells and ornaments on them so that um, he could hear them enter and the people could know that the high priest has entered and was atoning for their sins. There, there's this uh, theory, it's not biblical, but a lot of Jewish people believe it, that the reason why the high priest had to wear bells was because, you know, he was doing a lot of movement in the inside of the holies of holies. And if the bells were to stop ringing, it would mean that the high priest made a mistake. And then they would pull them out, but they would pull out a dead body because you had to be perfect in the sight of God. You could do nothing that you haven't been commanded to do. Not one step. If he said light the incense first and then spread them around and then slay the animal and then put the blood here and put the blood here and put the... If you did it out of order, if you did it be before you were supposed to, if you did anything that you weren't commanded to do, you would die instantly. Why? Because you didn't operate in perfection. He demands holiness. He demands perfection. Man could never be perfect under that law. So he had to keep coming in atonement for sin. He had to keep coming in atonement for sin. And then he said, all right, enough is enough with these annual sacrifices. I'm going to send you a permanent sacrifice. Amen. I'm going to send you the Holy One of God. It says, behold the Lamb of God. That's what John said. He said, behold the Lamb of God. He knew who that was. It's the Lamb of God. He's only called a Lamb if he's here to become the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So he sacrificed Jesus. And he says, now, you remember when Jesus was, was, was on the cross and he hung and he said, it is finished. The scripture says, and the veil tore. Yes. You know what that veil is? That's the veil to the holies of holies. You could not enter into there unless you were the high priest. He said, but now that the ultimate sacrifice has come, the veil is torn, and I've given you access into the holies of holies through righteousness. Mm -hmm. You now can stand before God in righteousness. Yes. No longer the high priest. You are covered by the blood because you are covered you, Jesus. with Christ. And can stand boldly before him on the throne. Hebrews 9, 12 says, neither by the blood of goats nor calves, but by the blood of Jesus, he entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for all of mankind. His blood will never need to be shed again. It is the ultimate sacrifice. And as long as Jesus is perfect in the eyes of God, that's why he had to keep the law. That's why Jesus had to keep and fulfill the law. Keep every single commandment of that law. Why? Because now he's considered perfect in the eyes of God. And when we clothe ourselves with Christ, that righteousness is imputed onto us. Why? Because it gives us access into the holies of holies to stand before God. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. He's able to keep you from falling. Try standing before God without the covering of the blood of Jesus, without the atonement work of Jesus on your soul, and you have no shot of standing before him without Christ's righteousness. Psalms 91, I'm gonna skip through a few of these verses because we're getting tight on time. Psalms 91, it says, he that dwelleth in the secret place. This is the place you wanna be. 
This is the place of your inheritance. This is your place of rest. This is the place where the king dwells. This is the secret place. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. Verse 4, he shall cover thee with feathers, and under his wing shall thou trust. His mm -hmm. truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Verse 7, a thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand mm -hmm. at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh mm -hmm. thee. Amen. Verse 9, because thou hast made the Lord thy refuge, thy, the most high, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. These are promises. Mm -hmm. These are promises. He said, when you dwell in the secret place, all the things that you see happening, all the destruction that you see happening, you will be shielded. Now, it doesn't mean that you won't face any persecution. Because he said, they who live righteous shall suffer persecution. But he said, and the Lord will deliver thee. Amen. The Lord will deliver thee. He will rescue you. There will always be a means of protection and deliverance. <clears throat> he shall call upon me and I will answer him. And I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will he live and I shall testify and show him my salvation in the secret place, the dwelling of God, the place that you enter into the holies of holiness through the scepter of righteousness. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. In Hebrews 4 and I, he told us, he said, there remaineth therefore rest for he that has entered into his rest he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. Mm -hmm. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. Let us then labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. The king lives in the holies of holies. This is his kingdom. This is the kingdom that he wants to expand on the earth. He said, let your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, just as it is in heaven. Jesus comes up on the scene, and Jesus' first declaration was, repent. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven has arrived. Amen. And now Jesus reaches out to these disciples, and he touches them, and he breathes on them, and he says, receive my spirit. Why? Because the spirit is going to live in the heart of man, and he's going to be able to communicate with the Father through the Holy Spirit in the condition of holiness, and that's going to give you righteousness of life. That's going to allow you to operate in the holiness of holies, and you will see the king through a purified heart. Now, the purpose he wants you to do all that is so that now you can expand his kingdom on earth. He said, when you heal that guy, make sure you tell him that means the kingdom has come upon you. And everybody will begin to, to, to wonder, what is this kingdom? How do I become part of this kingdom? How do I get connected to this kingdom? By faith in Jesus Christ. By faith in Jesus Christ, the power of the kingdom all started with the word of the king. Everything that I just walked you through from the holies of holiness, the rest, the inheritance, the righteousness, hope, belief, faith, it all came through the word of the king. Mm -hmm. The apostle asked the people who, who tried to go back to the ways of the laws, he said, I'm just going to ask you this one question. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or was it by the hearing of faith? Amen. He's giving them a teaching. He's trying to explain something to them. He's drawing a conclusion for them. Did you receive from God through the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Oh, well, I got it by the hearing of faith. He said, okay then. Then everything pertaining to life and godliness comes through the hearing of faith. You don't have to work for it. You just have to have faith for it. You just have to have faith for it. How do I get faith for it? How do I enter into that kingdom? How do I get righteousness of life? 
you're going to have to go see the king. That's the only way you get the word of the king. You got to be in his presence. You got to seek the kingdom. You got to seek after the kingdom. You seek after the kingdom. Why? You're trying to get to the kingdom, but the kingdom is within. Mm -hmm. And so now that changes the way my prayer life is. Instead of being on my knees and begging to God and change my circumstances to help you, Lord, I'm tired and I'm struggling. He said, no, calm down, get into your quiet place, and realize the kingdom is within. I want you meditating on that word. Information to revelation in the heart. Meditate the word. Meditate the word. Meditate the word. What are you doing? You're seeking after him. And that word goes from information to revelation. The Holy Spirit begins to speak. Why? Because you've been seeking after him. You've been knocking on the door and he said, I'm opening the door. And now I'm declaring my word unto you. I'll take her with his mind. I'm declaring it unto you. What do I have? I have the word of the king now. Oh my God, I'm confident. I have faith. Mm -hmm. Now, if I stay under what is heard, if I stay under the word of the king, that allows me to believe, become one spirit. Now I'm influenced. I'm persuaded by his word. Why? Because I stay under what is heard. That is the obedience of faith. What does that do for me? It allows me to have righteousness imputed unto me. Righteousness is the scepter of the kingdom. Once you reach this state of righteousness, man, you can enter into the holies of holies, the secret place, the place of rest. What is rest? That's the heavenly blessedness where you become partakers with Christ. Mm -hmm. In Christ, it's all the finished work. The work is complete. Jesus on the cross says, it's finished. Great. Christ has all of it. If you become one spirit in righteousness, now all these things will just be added unto you. It's your inheritance. He said, come and take of your inheritance. Be partakers with Christ. But it's in this rest. It's in the kingdom of God. But the kingdom of God is within. This is the objective of God. He said, here is my love made perfect. God is love. We all know that. God is love. God is love. Then he says, this is how my love is made perfect. How, God? As I am, so are you. Amen. Amen. In this earth, in this time. How does man become perfect? When he becomes just like me. How do I become like you, God? When you believe and become one spirit. Now you're carrying the spirit of, you got the faith of Jesus Christ. Now watch this. When you believe the love, that's what grace is. It's the administration of God's love. It's his unmerited favor being poured into you. When you believe the love, you become the beloved of the king. That's all beloved means. When he calls you beloved, He's saying you believe, become one spirit with his love, just as he is. You believe the love. You're the beloved of the king. And when you're the beloved of the king, oh, he opens the door for you. He holds out the scepter of righteousness for you. He gives you everything pertaining to life and godliness. You're mm -hmm. the throne. Why? You're the beloved of the king. You believe the love. But you have to believe the love. But it's going to require faith to believe. Mm -hmm. I am going to stop there. 11.32. Good timing. I'm going to stop there. This was a lesson that I found important because oftentimes we get sidetracked with remembering where is the source of our provision. It's with the king. It's with the king. It's in the kingdom, and he placed it all in you. And so now he said, you have to start looking within. You have to start looking within. Let your request be made from within. Seek after the king. Get his word. Get his power. Grow in faith. And enjoy the inheritance that's a byproduct of believing unto righteousness. Any questions, any thoughts, feel free.
Praise the Lord. Amen. Brother Morris, you was teaching. Yes, sir. <laughs> when you was talking up there, when you was teaching, you were saying 99.99% of belief is 100% unbelief. There I was is. like, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's the, and the thing is when you get the word of the Lord through the spirit of the Lord when the Lord himself reveals the revelator reveals revelation to you reveals his own word to you the word of a king there is power there it is I'm just like amen, amen. this is the truth that's right 99.99 99. see with that when you get the word of the king like that there ain't no unbelief <laughs> yeah that's right that's right there ain't no unbelief that's right jesus is the truth that's right amen, amen. amen brother morris you was teaching up there to jesus be the glory all the glory goes unto the lord i thank the lord for this day he was thinking about us on this day Today is the day that the Lord has made. We Amen. will rejoice and be glad in it. He made this day for us to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 Powerful teaching. I look Thank forward you. to it every Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 Yeah. Thank you for that. I appreciate the feedback. Um, I. I I had to grow into that understanding of faith. Yes. I was of the, I was one of the people that used to love to say, um, when, you know, circumstance occurred that I have faith, that I have faith. And what I was trying to do, I was trying to create faith by saying I have faith, but that doesn't create faith. Mm -hmm. And so his word is a persuasion mechanism. His word is a confidence builder. That's what gets you to mm -hmm. the 100% confidence. Is when he speaks that word into your heart, it shoots your confidence yep. to the roof. It, it fully persuades. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's why I say that's why the word faith, which is pistis, the root word is pietho, which is persuasion. The word is meant to persuade one into full confidence. Mm. And I had to learn how to how to stop trying to build confidence and get into the word so that it can create confidence. Amen. Amen. You are saying the truth, Brother Morris. You are saying the truth right there. Yes, sir. You are. You're saying the truth. Because that's how it works. <laughs> See, when the revelator, the G, when Jesus Christ reveals his own word, he is the word. When he reveals his own word that was written, it goes into Rhema now. There ain't no doubt. <laughs> there is no doubt that. Mm. That's it. You're right. You're right, brother Mar mm, you're right, brother Morris. You're right. Got yes, it. Sir. You're right. That's the truth. Yeah. I, I come into agreement with the truth. That's that's true. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. The understanding. With all you're getting, get understanding. I thank the Lord for understanding. And it's that centurion, by his understanding, he was able, the Lord said, Great is your faith more than anyone in Israel, all by understanding. There's power in that understanding. So I just want to thank Amen. you, Brother Morris. Thank you for the understanding. Thank you for the teaching. Yes, sir. Amen. And thank you for breaking the yoke of unbelief on the yes, hearers sir. on this day, on today. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I, I remember um, God gave me an assignment one time. And uh, man, this, this was a gut punch. God told me, he said, I want you to go and I want you to make a list. He said, I want you to write on this list everything that you receive by faith. He said, I only want you to document the things that came to pass that you first heard in your spirit. If you didn't hear it in your spirit, then it doesn't go on the list. And so I sat down and I spent a lot of time thinking, like, I know I was operating in faith. Do you know my list only has four items? 
Wow. I, I, I couldn't believe it. I, I just knew I was about to create a laundry list of things, but I could only come up with four times that he, he declared it to me and then it manifested. And he said, I wanted you to see that you don't operate in faith very often. You don't operate in my, he said when, when, when he returns, he wants to know, will I find any faith in the world, any faith in the earth? Is there anybody that yeah. yeah. my spirit and operated? I have four items. I was embarrassed. This has to change. I got to get in this word. I, I got I to get more revelation, mm -hmm. more declaration. I got to mm -hmm. confess and, and, and manifest these things. I got to start living by faith. Yes. And so that, that was an eye-opening moment of him showing me that, that there's a responsibility that comes with faith that I haven't been operating in that he expects us to operate in. Amen, amen. That's amen. Right. That's true. That's right. Amen. Any other amen. questions or comments? Amen. Well, I thank God for the word this morning. And thank God for the brother. And I understand when the truth hits you, it make you feel that way. It, it, it make you laugh because it give you joy. <laughs> you can't help it. Yeah, you can't help it. But thank That's God right. for the message. And uh, I'm reminded uh, through the lesson about Esther, when Esther had to go before the king. And even though, the, even though he was her husband, it still had the authority of being the king and she had to come under that authority like everybody else. Right. Right. But she had to prepare herself. She couldn't just go to him any kind of way. There was a responsibility that people had before they come before the king. Mm -hmm. And she did. And I thank God for those stories that was left for us to see and, and to read them and to meditate on. Them. So it gives us an idea of how he wants us to prepare ourselves when we come before him. That's and right. so, so I thank you for the word today and thank Leisha for her prayers this morning and uh, continue to do a good work for the Lord. Yes, Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to um, say I appreciate the way you broke down what the kingdom of God actually is um, by backtracking it, by telling us what it is. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's what the kingdom of God is. Uh, God is in reminding us that the Holy Spirit is within us, within, within, it's within the heart of man. And the way we get that kingdom is through believing. So when we always talk about the kingdom starting with us, that's a very literal statement uh, because once we get into that state of joy and peace in the condition of being believing, mm -hmm. that's when the kingdom of God becomes manifest. So I, I appreciate Amen. the way you taught that because mm -hmm. that made a lot of sense to me. Mm -hmm. Understanding, yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. I, I got it. I only, I only did a half sermon before on, on the rest. I haven't done a full sermon. I need to do a full teaching on the rest because um, it, it's, it's your validation that you're actually believing. That, that the evidence of belief is rest. Mm -hmm. Rest provides the evidence to, to, to validate that you're already in a state of belief. And, and it gives you that checkpoint. That I'm not in fear. I'm not in worry. I'm not experiencing anxiety. I actually have joy and peace and I have the king's word. Then mm -hmm. I'm experiencing his rest. Yes. We, we, we have to do a good teaching on, on, on what rest is. And I think I'm going to do that very soon. But thank and, you for that feedback. And the word manifests itself in your life so that, it. people, so that people can see the works of God through you. Now, when you're not resting, something is going to manifest itself so you'll know the difference. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And the truth, the truth will make you free. When you get Amen. that truth, it has, that truth has no choice but to make you free. You have That's no right. choice but to be free when you get that truth in you. That's right. Mm -hmm. For what you said, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Well, thank you all today. I, I appreciate you joining in. I appreciate the feedback and the comments. Um, it's always beautiful when we can converse amongst each other about the word and, and get understanding collectively. Even hearing you guys feedback and comments um, always feed me and give me more revelation. So I appreciate when you guys um, comment about the word. Yeah. Uh, so I'll close us out with a quick word of prayer. Father, we just thank you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you and we acknowledge you as our king. Mm -hmm. we, we stand in honor. We stand in awe of who you are as king of kings and lord of lords. Mm -hmm. Father, we, we, we say you are a holy king. You are a righteous king. Mm -hmm. And Father, we thank you for accepting us as, as, as not only servants, but as children of the most high. We yes. thank you for your Christ and the power and the strength that he brings to us. We thank you for making us heirs to the throne. Yes, and we yes. thank you for giving us the faith of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Father, you said that, that righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. So we desire to operate in your righteousness. Mm -hmm. we, we are committed to having the faith of Christ, to believing in your word, to becoming one spirit with you. For Father, your rest is better than life itself. Amen. We know no life outside of Jesus, Father. So we, we are committed to being one with him. We are committed to living a life of faith. We are committed to following his example. For there's no way to you except through him. Mm -hmm. We forever give you the praise. We sing hallelujah to your name, Father. Mm -hmm. We love you forevermore. Thank you, Lord. In his mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thank you, everybody, and we'll be back at it again next week. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Morris. Thank you.